This is a 9 kilowatt generator. This generator has not been modified. It runs on gasoline or propane, it's dual fuel, but it can be modified to run completely on water. Now, I've shied away from water power generators for a long time, at least three years, probably longer, because they still have the internal combustion engine. And I don't like the internal combustion engine. It's loud, it's inefficient, vibrates a lot. But I've been looking at this chart. Here's the first seal, 2020. Here's the fourth seal coming up, 2023. July. It says a blue horse here, in case you're wondering, because it's translated from Korean. It's a pale horse. So, I personally agree with this chart. I don't think we have much time left. I think we need free energy in whatever form now. So, WITS is doing partnerships with uh, water power generators for your business. They're selling like hotcakes. They're selling faster than they can make them. Everyone that's making them is like two years behind in orders. So, I don't have money right now to partnership with WITS. That might change change soon. So I just wanted to show you what I've been working on. I took this engine it's from a push mower. It's a, it's a Tecumseh engine. It does work. It's a 195 cc engine. So 200 cc engine. It's from a push mower. So on the intake I have a T with a hose valve so I can just adjust the air inlet. I took the exhaust off and I will show you what I did here. I took the key out so it's hard to see but the key slot is right here and I changed the timing a bit. I'm not saying it's right, but I think with water power, you want it to be about top dead center. And normally it's about 10 to 20, 30 degrees before top dead center. So what I did here, I just want to show you because uh, it's simple. Simple idea when you're testing your generator, or if you start with a small engine, because a small engine is going to use a lot less gas. So that'll run all day, and uh, you can test your fuel to see if it works and that'll save your arm so it's an arm saver so I built my first cell I had nine cells I had them since 2010 I stuck them together let's see sorry get this in frame So it's drawn about four amps. And let's look inside. <laughs> Not looking too good. So I think the plates are conditioning. It smells like chlorine. I put uh, safety salt, that stuff over there in here. Probably not a good idea. So that's an embarrassment. But like I said, it's the first shell I made.
Water power generator tips. The first one. WITS is offering business partnerships for those who want to build water power generators. This is an extremely lucrative business with low overhead. They are also offering reasonably priced deals for those who want only a personal water power generator. So if you're interested in a water power generator business, you need to be called, you need to have some funds, you need to have time, and you need to have skills. So that's four things. But if you don't have any skills and you know someone with skills, then you can provide the funds and partner with them. Or if you have skills but no funds, if you know someone with funds, you can partner with them. So again, if you have, if you're called, if you have funds, if you have time, and if you have skills, then send them an email, contact at wits.ws. Number two, do not contact the government and tell them you have a free energy generator. Yes, some people actually do this. Number three, do not advertise to the public that you are building water power generators. Your customers will be people who have money and their friends who also have money will want one. Number four, 10 kilowatt generators are the easiest to convert to run only on water. Start with a 10 kilowatt generator. Number five, you want your generator to last uh, longer than a normal generator and uh, there's some water in the engine so you have to do a few things. So you want to use 100% synthetic oil such as AMSOIL because pure synthetic oil does not wear out. Don't use a blend, use pure synthetic oil. It's expensive but it doesn't wear out. It just needs to be filtered. Number six, use prolonged engine treatment to reduce engine friction. Seven, add Marvel Miracle Oil additive. Eight, spray oil in the air intake before shutting down the generator. Nine, uh, Witt's new method of converting a generator costs 1,000 to 1,500 US dollars. Their old method costs two to 3,000 dollars. The cost of the new conversion method is less than the cost of the generator. So the generator is about $1,100, $1,200. Number 10, an electrolysis cell produces HHO gas and heat. The method of producing heat, this method of producing heat, is called cold fusion. A cell that uses a 1,000 watts of electricity can produce 10 to 20 kilowatts of heat. They can be made to be 20 times over unity on heat production and 20 times over unity on gas production. So it would be 40 times over unity using both. Number 11. A water power generator produces 20 to 30 kilowatts of heat. This can heat your home. The generator can be run inside because it does not burn hydrocarbons. Number 12, the noise of the generator can be reduced. Number 13, electrolysis cells can also produce electricity. So you can make a cell that produces gas and electricity without a generator if you're skilled at building cells, but you have to learn and gain skill, just like anything else. You can't just pretend that you're a master of building cells. Uh, it doesn't work, so you have to learn to do by doing. Uh, building electrolysis cells is a skill. So the first cell that you make is probably about 80% efficient, and as you get better, their efficiency improves. So almost every generator requires at least 200% efficiency to self-run. There's one type of generator that will run on a hydroxy cell that is under 100% efficient. 
So I don't know which type of generator it is, but I'm guessing it's an inverter generator because they're more efficient. Number 16. The first water power generator you build that is self-running, the HHO electrolyzer cell, whatever you want to call it, will usually draw about 1200 watts. So 1200 watts at 14 volts is 86 amps. So that's a lot, but that's why you start with a 10 kilowatt generator. 17. You need to use the correct amount of electrolyte, not too much and not too little. Number 18. Well, that's not a tip, but I do not know what electrolyte they're using. 19. Common electrolytes are table salt, rock salt, baking soda, and lye. Okay, and this is a big one. Number 20. The engine needs a quarter of a liter to one liter of HHO per second to produce 10 kilowatts of electricity. That's 15 to 60 liters per minute of gas. So that's quite a bit. 21. HHO has an explosion implosion shockwave. So people say it implodes, not explodes. Well, it explodes and then it implodes. So every explosion has a explosion implosion shockwave, but with pure HHO, it's quite a significant amount of implosion. Uh, the sound of a large HHO explosion is deafening. Uh, so HHO will explode almost instantly and then implode. And also there's different types of hydrogen. So you can have hydrogen that has a higher level energy. And Bob Boyce talked about this. So you don't need as much gas. And you do need some air. Here we go. I thought I missed it. So nitrogen, you might have heard, you might have heard of a nitro cell or an Aussie cell. Nitrogen combustion is part of many free energy fuel systems. Some people have made engines and they might be polarized using dominant energy, but they block off the intake and the exhaust with a metal plate and sometimes they put air sometimes they put something else like a refrigerant in there but the engine will run so no there's no exhaust and there's no intake but it still runs each time okay so number 23 the water can be captured from the exhaust and it can be reused and that's it.